Hello, everyone, and welcome to Oceana's O Life at Home social series. I'm so excited to be your host for this event, and we have not only one, but two very special people that are going to be joining us today. First of all, the man, the myth, the legend, one of the great souls of this earth, and a good friend of Oceana Cruises. We've been very excited, all of us, to be one big family since 2003, and I'm talking about Jacques Pepin. We're talking about a man who is a master chef. He is an author. He is a television personality. He also is a wonderful artist. And we're gonna find out more about him and what he's doing right now in our O Life social series. So Jacques Pepin and Claudine Pepin, both are with us today. And the mysterious man pouring the wine is my husband. Well, you better Raleigh. say hello. <laughs> <laughs> hi. Okay. Hi, Raleigh. Hi, Jacques. Yes, hi. How are you? I am well. This is the yes. first for We're us. Excited to be with you. Hi, Leslie. Hi, Leslie. hi Claudine. Uh, it's early for me, but I'm going to do this anyway. Yeah, here you yeah. go. <laughs> you know, Jacques. I know very little French, but the one phrase that I know you know, I know this. Voici la chance que tu attends depuis longtemps. But this is the chance we have been waiting for because this is the chance to talk to you, uh, not only because we're always talking on the ship, whether it be at a dinner, at a luncheon, uh, when you're doing a cooking class, but now we get to Zoom and you're at your home, I'm in my home. So welcome to our O Life Social Series. Thank you, well, welcome to our home. Thank you very much. First of all, I wanna let you know that I did, uh, I watched this particular DVD again, oh. which I absolutely love. For anybody that has not yet seen the art of the craft, uh, Jacques Pepin, it not only talks about uh, your life, Jacques, from a very early on, uh, but takes them all the way to the celebrations of uh, four years ago, your 80th birthday, if I may say so, which was a huge celebration. Yeah. We celebrated all year. In fact, we're still celebrating. That's, Every day should be a celebration of our lives. And you're absolutely right. I want to ask you about your early years. Uh, we're going to go when you arrived in New York, because I, I love a phrase that you said in this series, uh, where you talked about a Chinese proverb that patriotism are the tastes of your childhood. I could be paraphrasing myself. Is that true? Yes, well, this is from Lin Yutang, a Chinese philosopher, not from me. But uh, it is true, you know, uh, the dishes that you have as a child, regardless of the country you come from, are very visceral, are very powerful. Uh, they are much more than food, much more than the physiological function of food. When you see those kids, the American soldier in Afghanistan or somewhere else, uh, what do they think? But they dream of at night. They dream of his mother, uh, uh, you know, clam chowder, or his father, uh, fried chicken, or, or lobster roll, or whatever. So at that point, the food is much more than food. It is, it is home. It is comfort. It is security. It is love. You know, and that's what we put into the food. So yes, that's very important. So yes, patriotism is the taste of the dishes of your youth. I, I think that's a marvelous phrase and something that I will share. Uh, with family and friends. Just before I get into your beginnings in New York, what food did you miss when you came to America? What childhood food? Yeah, that's a good, that's question. A good question. That's a good question. Certainly the chicken, uh, I come from a part of France called uh, Poulet de Bresse, uh, Bresse chicken, very well known too. And those chicken uh, are still very expensive and still very good. So. Uh, those simple chicken with cream sauce and tarragon that my mother used to do, that type of thing, the, 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 the cheese fondue, for example, my father used to do cheese fondue, uh, fromage for the, the cheese mixture with wine and, uh, and uh, cream and so forth. Uh, you know, those dishes, yes, certainly, uh, uh, I miss them, but not for very long because I cannot reproduce them. <laughs> 
I learned, I learned so many, so many more things. You know, I don't really think that uh, I was ever very chauvinistic about being French. And uh, even though often I'm, I'm considered maybe the quintessential French chef, after 60 years in America, if you open my book and see a black bean soup with uh, with uh, with uh, banana on top and cilantro, because my wife. Family come from Cuba, at Puerto Rico, or you, you see a, a New England clam chowder or whatever. So I'm probably quite a quintessential American chef now for all those years. Bravo. I was noticing there was a, a, a little repartee between you and Julia Child where she said, this is not the way it's in French. And you said, well, I'm from Connecticut. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't know about that. I want to talk to you about the very first job when you came to New York was at La Pavignon. Yeah. Is that correct? And then you served, was probably one of the world's best restaurants, at least in the United States. But then you had a gentleman named Howard Johnson that used to, who was a gourmet himself, that used to come in and lured you away from accepting a job at the White House under the Kennedy administration to work for him at Howard Johnson. How, do you, how did you make that decision? You have to realize at the time, you know, the cook was really at the bottom of the social scale. Any good mother would have wanted her son or daughter married a, a lawyer or a, a doctor, certainly not a cook. But now we are genius. I don't know what happened. <laughs> quite, quite different than it used to be. So, you know, I was proposed the job at the White House for Kennedy. But in the context of the time for me, I had done that in France with a couple of different presidents, and I'd never been on a newspaper, on a magazine, or until that did not exist. The cook was in the cook, but no one ever came to the kitchen to, to uh, you know, on the, there was no kudo in the dining room, you, you never were invited, and so forth. So that didn't exist. So frankly, I did not realize the potential of going to the White House, and I had done it, and I wasn't particularly interested in doing that again. On the other hand, Howard Johnson, uh, I went there to see those 500 gallon kettles at the commissary with enormous production, American eating habits, and all of that type of things. That was exciting for me, exciting and different. And frankly, I worked for Howard Johnson for 10 years, 1960, 1970. Then I opened a restaurant called the in New York on Fifth Avenue, mass production of, of, of soup. Then I opened the World Trade Center with Global, the whole commissary. Then I was a consultant at the Russian Tea Room in New York. I'm saying all of that to say that I could never have done any of those jobs if I hadn't done Howard Johnson. But another training altogether. Before you were offered the job at Howard Johnson, had you ever been in a Howard Johnson? No, never. <laughs> I didn't know the name. But Mr. Johnson, as you mentioned, Howard D. Johnson, the father, but was uh, one of the clients at the pavilion and all that. And he was really an extraordinary man to me. I remember he came to my wedding in 1966 at Craig Lebon in East Hampton. And I pick him up, he had his boat, so I go pick him up. And he was sitting on a case of Don Perignon waiting for me outside <laughs> with this. Then he came to the christening of Claudine and so forth. So he was really, uh, yeah, a very really extraordinary man. Wonderful. Uh, you, I know you have 1,000 stories. We don't have a lot of time, but there's some things that I want to cover. I know that you did What's My Line. I know that you did some of those early television shows, which fortunately we are able to see many of those moments uh, via YouTube. What got you or who got you to do one of those shows? I don't really know. I mean, I want What's My Line and to tell the truth when I was uh, uh, the chef at the potagerie, that soup restaurant that I created. So, you know, I remember, in, to tell the truth, there are two other Frenchmen, much bigger than me, because at that time I was 30 pounds lighter than I am now, I was very thin. But they took two fat Frenchmen and said, which one is the chef of the three? Of course, they all pick up the other one. But uh, I end up here, and after what's my line, I don't know people asked me, and uh, because of the potagerie and other things, it was the beginning of, uh, of uh, me going on television, and, uh, you know, it was fun, yeah. Were you nervous at all when you started those shows? 
not really. I mean, I'm usually most of the show, basically all of the show that I have done involve cooking. And when it involves cooking, as soon as I get to the stove and I start cooking, then I kind of forget about uh, the television. You know? So uh, for me, if I do something that I like to do, that I feel comfortable with, then it's fine. Doing those early shows, what's my line to tell the truth, etc. Did that give you the confidence then to be one of the pioneers, as everyone states that you are, of early cooking on television? Well, really, frankly, this was just luck, you know. People ask me to go on television, to be a child that started on television in 1964, and we were very frank. So I did my book of La Technique, and Julia said, this is fantastic. You have to go on television, show them those techniques. So she sent me to see the program uh, director or whatever at WNET in New York. Uh, and uh, I said, yeah, yeah, no, we are very interested too. And that's what about the end of it. For a year to year, I never heard of anyone. Now I know the big station, uh, WGBS in Boston, asked me the same thing too. Come to, oh, we're interested in doing something with you. And I say, great, I never went anywhere because they raise raised money. It's already a question of raising money. So uh, one time I was giving classes in California. I was actually giving classes at Martin Yan, where the cooking school in the Palo Alto there. And uh, so I went there and he told me, you know, KQED, the PBS station in San Francisco, wants me to do a, a show with you. Can you come and do it with me? I said, yeah, sure. So we want to do it together. And then the producer here, a week or so after, probably said, you know, we'd be very interested in doing something with you. I said, yeah, sure, fine. But it has happened several times. No one did anything. So he said, he said, can you tape like next number? I was giving class all over the country during the... the so I said, yeah, next number be on. Well, uh, she said, we will have the money by, by January. We will have the money by January or February or March. So I was ready to go to France and I did during the summer. And all of a sudden they said, we have the money, you start in six weeks. I had no recipe. So this is what I saw, the first series that I did today's Gourmet. And I think you, you went on the first series, right? Today's Gourmet. Yeah, so she, was, she was in college at the time. Uh, now was, that was in San Francisco, right? Right. It was in San Francisco. But Claudine was in college at BU at Boston, yeah. yeah. Because I've seen so many of the episodes where Colleen is, uh, that Claudine is there and she is learning on the spot. How true is this? It's very true. I mean, honestly, if my father was a brain surgeon, you wouldn't say, oh, I bet you know how to perform surgery. I, I mean, I, I didn't cook. I didn't want to cook. I didn't like it and because everybody did it all the time and so when I finally had to learn how to cook I think I did pretty well because I had a lot of private classes for the world to see <laughs> with like no, the, the, the point is that I wanted it to be natural I did those shows and I said maybe I, I should have someone with me like Claudine she can be the, the Vox Populi that is asking questions that people would want to ask if they could and speak to people with a better accent than mine so they could understand what she was saying. <laughs> and uh, so she came, and, uh, but most of the time I didn't even tell her the menu That's that we were doing. So she didn't know, she wasn't particularly interested. When we started, she said, wow, that's how you do that. And it was, uh, it's fake, but it wasn't fake, wasn't she didn't fake. know. To do well, it's fun to watch you cook both together, and I'm sure that the experiences in your home during the holidays has to be unbelievable. Of course. How it's does... It's <laughs> really? So it's, it's terrific. <laughs> How do you keep that spirit going, Jacques? Family is so important to you, has always been important to you. It's the heart and soul of so much of what you represent to other people. Friendship. You have had long life friendships that need cultivating people have to work at being friends you seem to do it so effortlessly with your family and your friends how do you do it <laughs> with this i'll start more <laughs> yes. now yes i mean uh, you know 
in what we do, especially now, we can see that in the time of the pandemic and all that, people getting back at home and cooking together and being together. I mean, this is maybe the most ultimate part of what civilization is, you know, to cook, to sit down, eat together and talk. This is what it is. And in cooking, as we do, as I see in the kitchen on the ship, you know, when I go there, uh, there is no political application, racial application, gender application. We have this in what we do. Uh, as I say, everyone is the same uh, in the eye of the stone. You know, this is the, the kitchen. And uh, so, yes, uh, uh, cooks are very generous in general. And you can see that now in many, many ways, from Jose Alves to Ming Tsai, giving their time, cooking for people, and so forth. And uh, even for us, I've been doing close to a hundred now of video, video for Facebook, already doing Facebook. And, and uh, it's amazing. You know? you yeah. say that? I mean, people, people love going on my father's Facebook page, which I manage, because it's just like a really easy little recipe. Like um, we did French toast and he uses ice cream instead of the milk and eggs and all of that stuff. He just melts ice cream. Why? Because he learned that at Le Pavillon, I think so. No, at no. Le Plaza, uh, Plaza in Paris. In Paris yeah. So, you know, like little useful tips on how to make a nice little dinner or something interesting. And it's all there. It's all there. Well, I'll tell you, I uh, have resisted Facebook for a very long time, but I am going to join just so I can be a part of learning how to do some cooking tips. Uh, Jacques, I know that cooking has been and being a chef all your life and your family is incorporated. Your granddaughter, Shori, Raleigh, your son-in-law, Claudine, everyone. Is this now a family business? Well, it's a family business in the sense that, you know, regardless of what you do, you are enough to eat. So when all has been said, the three hours after you finish eating or five hours after you say, what are we going to have for dinner? So we always go back to this. And for us, it's always been part of a, certainly one of the biggest differences when I was a kid, we were maybe closer to mother nature. I mean, you know, going to the market, getting the food, I was eviscerating chicken, I was killing fish too when I was 13 years old because the market and going down, there was no, everything was organic, even though the word organic did not exist, but we didn't have any, uh, uh, you know, any type of fertilizer and uh, fungicide, insecticide, or stuff like this. So we are pretty close to mother nature. So for me, I was always this way. When she was small, uh, you know, I could hold her in my arms. She was a year old and she stirred the fat. We cooked her. So she, quote, made it. So she stirred the fat. So she was going to eat it. Or eat it because we never discussed the menu uh, with the kid. We that what we cook. And the same thing with the shuri. You know, my granddaughter, I mean, the Claudine's daughter. So the same thing, since she was small, you know, I could tell her she came in, she was three years old, to get me parsley, the child, no, that's right, no, that's what you tested. <laughs> or I take her to the market and say, get me some pear. Make sure they are ripe, smell them. So they smell good to open oh, So, you know, the kid get involved in the food, in preparing the food. And that leads to conversation around the table. That lead, you know, it's a, it's a kind of canvas uh, against which I can discuss, because otherwise, what do you discuss with a kid who's 15, 16 years old with an iPhone and, uh, and all that stuff? <laughs> so, so food is a common denominator for us in many ways. Well, you've, you've helped new cooks like me, someone who's trying to learn how to cook, that will soon be making French onion soup in mm -hmm. this bowl. Uh, you've made it easy because you, you tell us not to worry if you make a mistake. You know, so many, so many of us that are, that are cooking now, especially that I have time at home, to uh, not feel bad about making a mistake. Move on. Yeah, absolutely. Drink yeah. more wine. And you don't care <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so much has been talked about uh, your life as a chef and a man of great spirit. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about your art, the, the passion that you have for uh, the many beautiful drawings that we have on our ship, the paintings that we have on our ship, but also uh, I recommend everyone should get this book. This has been a book 
that I have shared with so many people because they have their recipes that they think about. But the way you have illustrated the menus, uh, the joy of the dinner comes even before the joy of eating the dinner because you look at this beautiful art. Where did you come up with this concept? And it's magnificent. Well, you know, we have 12 of those book of menu at home. Starting, I've been married 54 years now. So started 52 years ago or so, we decided when people came to the house, my mother came from France, we write the menu we did and people sign on the other page. And sometimes I did drawing, sometimes I didn't. Now I usually do drawing. The point is that if I look at those 12 book of menu, I can tell you what she has for her second birthday. Look at it too. You know, so this is a whole life. We have a whole life in those menu and the people who were there. And I can look at them now and it's great. So this one is dead, this one is dead. Oh no, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, when we look at those, those menu, but uh, uh, yes, it is great, uh, great memory, you know, to, to remember those times. Even to remember the way the cooking changed and what we used to do, but we don't do anymore. And that led to other type of, uh, when I was at Columbia University, I took a class in painting and in sculpture and drawing one and uh, kind of uh, spur me in that direction. And then we rented a house uh, way before I was married in Woodstock, New York. Uh, and Woodstock is a kind of, uh, uh, you know, artist, uh, uh, artist uh, little village and so forth, I'd say New York in the Catskill. So we started refurnishing, or with, not to work with my hands. So all piece of furniture, we're starting to redo the piece of furniture. We're starting to work on the, uh, I used to work doing all of the, the tile in the, here that I have here, all of the, 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 the cement uh, work that we have outside the wall and so forth. Working with my hand like this, that led also to panning, and uh, I have been panning for, over half a century, I have panning from uh, the late 50s, early 60s, and so forth. So it's already been part of who I am, and uh, it satisfies me in a different way than cooking, but uh, it completes it you know, in some way. Uh, Jacques, do you have a favorite work of yours that you have painted over the years? And if so, where is it? A favorite, a favorite work, a favorite. Painting. No, oh, yes, you do. Yeah, I do? Yeah, we have one right here. Here, this can be your favorite. Oh. It changes every day. This is one of my absolute favorites. Oh, okay. This is, this is an abstract. Claudine liked my abstract more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, no. This, but that, the, one is, the, that one is really special. I'm sure you couldn't really see it very well, but it's a really special piece. The point well, is, the beauty of it is that I have been back to France with my mother or some of my parents, or France, what painting from 40 years ago, 50 years ago. I look at those and I'm kind of amazed. I know that I could never do that again. I could never do it this way. I don't feel this way. I don't look at it this way too. And that's very interesting because I would love, I would love to be able to taste the food that I created when I was an apprentice and after. Uh, now with the palette that I have now, uh, because it would be quite different. But of course, food is very evanescent. You know, you test it, it goes, it disappeared, and all, the, all is left is the memory. But the memory can be tricky. It can be different. So yes, I would really love to taste food that I did in Paris and all that when I was young. Me too. Uh, because I know, I know <laughs> that when I look at all the old painting that I have, I have no connection to it. Sometimes I say, wow, I would not be able to do it this way. I don't feel this way. Really. So, so it's interesting. One final question. Well, actually, I have two final questions. I, I love that. Two final questions. This bowl, which will be filled with onion soup, <laughs> has the rooster, has your iconic rooster on it. And when I was watching this wonderful DVD for the 10th time, the line I love is that where you were born, chicken is a religion. So, where does this iconic rooster come from, from Jack Baha? Well, to start with, as I said, you know, I was born in a town called Bourg-en-Bresse in France. The chicken of Bresse, B-R-E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, are the best chicken of France. And uh, so- and They have blue feet. 
Well, they, they have like the French flag. They have white chicken, yeah. red cock, and blue feet. And blue, blue, blanc, rouge, you know, <laughs> the color of yeah. the French flag. So uh, I don't know, for th some, some reason, I started doing some of those chicken, uh, and uh, it kind of multiply. And actually, I just finished a whole series of chicken vegetable or chicken fruit. That is, I transform a, a, a pineapple into a chicken. I transform a bunch of leek into a chicken. I have a whole series of those. Yeah. Uh, into a painting, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so. I have a whole they're, series they're of really, They're really, really beautiful. I yes. have one that, that is all apples. The, the chicken is all apples. It's beautiful. Gorgeous. Well, your artistry, your, uh, your presence is, is a gift to all of us. Uh, Jacques, I thank you so much. I have one last question I want to ask you. When you've been on board any one of our ships, what is your favorite port that you have sailed into, that the memory of sailing into a port is something that is with you? Wow, that, that's, a, that's a, a difficult question. Uh, I have so many favorites for different reasons, but uh, Monte Carlo would be a, a good place, right? I Montenegro. Mean, uh, right. Montenegro was pretty spectacular. Oh, yes, when we went. Uh, yes, so, oh, yes, that was good. And in uh, Slovakia and all that, on that part of the world, too. Uh, it's so difficult because from London to, 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 uh, to Brest, to whatever. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Saint Malo, yeah, I love Saint Malo uh, and going. But, uh, uh, I usually, or very often, we go out, oh, we yeah. go to a restaurant. I like to go to the market wherever I am, usually Portugal, uh, yep. Spain, uh, Italy, France. We eat to the market. I love to go to the market. And certainly in the pandemic now, this is probably the thing that I miss the most because I haven't been to a market in three months. So I have to order food. And for me, I like to look at the food. I like to taste it. I like to smell it. I have to touch it. <laughs> so all the senses you know, for a chef as part of the food market, which I don't now, so I, yeah, I do miss that. But uh, when we're on the road, uh, we go to the market. Me, not my wife, she stay on board. She likes on board better than anything else. Well, I look forward to seeing both of you. Claudine, will we be able to have you as one of our guests coming up? Of you course. and Raleigh? I'll be honored and delighted. And I'm going to make Raleigh do it with me. Perfect. Perfect. Jacques, Claudine, thank you so very much. I look forward to seeing you in person very, very soon. And I'm going to let you have the last word, Jacques. Drink to your health, last to week. your cooking. <laughs> <laughs>